Hello and welcome back to the PMY Pro Podcast. My name is Jerome and I'm here with my co-host Derek Ellis. And today we're here with Stacey Ozario, who's a Senior Product Marketing Manager of NVIDIA RTX Desktops. How's it going, Stacey? Hey, Jerome. Hey, Derek. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited about this this episode. And I kind of just dive right into it. Um, you know, I know we we used to have the T1000. We still have the T1000 and T400 variants of professional entry-level GPUs. But I know recently we we announced some R, the RTX A1000 and RTX A400. So I definitely want to like really focus and dive into those on this this episode. And I guess kind of kick things off is like, how do you see these new RTX variants like impacting uh, the market for like entry level professional GPUs? Yeah. So we we launched the NVIDIA RTX A400 and A1000 GPUs back in April. And just over the course of the past few months or so, we're starting to see them getting um, becoming available with with our channel partners like PNY as well as in our OEM system builders. So it's now getting you know more availability within the the broader market, and um, they are based on our Ampere GPU architecture. So it's a little bit different than our our other refresh that we had earlier in this year and even last year, which was our Ada architecture refresh of desktop GPUs. But these are really targeted for entry-level RTX capabilities. Um, they introduce accelerated ray tracing and AI um, to their respective series or, or GPU segments for the first time. So it's really exciting because it's offering more professionals these new capabilities so that they can have more photorealistic visualizations and renders. They can run AI-enhanced applications on, the, on their desktops locally. And that could be like chatbots, um, co-pilots, and even using other generative AI tools like stable diffusion. So it's really opening up a way for more professionals to transform their daily workflows, whether it's like more effective productivity applications, or they can take advantage of this like new wave of design tools. So really giving them an opportunity to do more with their work and, and stay competitive as um, the industry continues to transform with, with AI. Can you kind of give me a little bit more of like a rundown of how this lays into the lineup of the different GPUs that you have? The A400 is really like the upgrade from a CPU-based system. It's the entry point to professional RTX graphics. Um, the A1000 is a step above that, so it will be more suitable for just like more demanding tasks. It has a little bit more memory, like double the memory of, of the A4000, sorry, A400. So um, it can handle maybe like medium sized CAD models. They can, it, it can handle higher resolution for video um, and just larger models in general with more textures. Um, so it's really for customers who may be doing like 2D graphics, maybe really basic 3D modeling, um, HD video content, things like that. Um, some just universal graphics, not really getting into heavy AI workloads, really just basic light AI inference, um, generative AI tasks that are just help speed up um, some features like denoising or even like concept development. Um, at that like smaller scale. I actually wanted to ask, how does that kind of fall in line with the different markets? Because again, we're talking about, you know, AECO in that sense. Um, is it mainly focused on AECO or is this mainly like, you know, used for media and entertainment? How would this kind of fall into those different realms? I guess within our traditional markets, we do focus on, you know, AECO, media and entertainment and manufacturing. Um, however, there's other industries where I think these cards actually are more impactful because of their smaller form factor. Um, you know, they're low profile, so they have like 50 watts of power. Um, they can be, you know, installed into these really compact workstations that could be deployed at the edge or just in like constrained limit, like space constrained places. And um, an example could be like financial services where you may have traders who are all lined up with like a bunch of tables on, on a floor and they have four screens each, but they don't have space for 
a big workstation. So they can have one of these small GPUs in a compact small form factor workstation on their desk behind the monitors, you know, kind of out of the way, but they're able to drive like four high res displays, you know, easily. So a trader is able to efficiently look at market trends. They could look at um, forecasting. They could even do like some really local data analytics. So it's it's really effective in that, in that sense. Um, it's also great for healthcare. These can be put into medical devices. Um, again, for like visualization purposes, it could be, you know, running scans, digital scans and, and help providers give diagnoses or feedback to, you know, their, their patients um, because they're able to see the scans like a lot faster um, than before. So MRI devices, you know, that that's a use case for that. Um, smart spaces is also like another industry where these small form factor cards are pretty great. Again, like this, the size itself of the cards and the fact that they don't need additional power to run um, makes it really good for edge deployments. So for smart spaces, it could be within retail, it could be in like interactive kiosks um, to help with that like customer experience. Um, it could also be used for like physical security and like command and control centers. Again, where there's also like multiple screens, but being able to to um, encode and decode like multiple video streams and get that data quickly to make better you know decisions. Um, so those are some of the industries or like the use cases outside of our traditional like media and entertainment, um, AECO and and manufacturing. However, like in those traditional uh, industries as well, they're they're great for some basic content creation, like 2D graphics, photo editing, um, specifically for an architect or a designer, they could be doing like more realistic product visualizations or architectural designs, where if they were using um, like a T400 or a T1000, they don't have like ray tracing cores and they don't have tensor cores. So being able to have those added capabilities is gonna bring like, it's gonna elevate their work to a higher level it's going to give them um, just better quality work so that they can have a more efficient workflow, fewer iterations as they can see what, you know, the design concept in, in more realistic uh, form factors. And I think one thing I wanna hit on there, which as you're, you're giving your answer there, just, you know, I definitely know the impact of, you know, CUDA, Tensor and RT cores um, now within the, the new RTX A1000, A400. I guess from a, a builder perspective or even from a customer um, for a, a small form factor, like what do you think, the, or what do you see the significance of that um, being able to just uh, eliminate an additional, I guess, power wire and just really just kind of plug it in and make it, I guess, the best thing is simplicity. All of our OEMs offer small form factor workstations. So these cards fit perfectly within them and you, you don't have the space to have like additional cables, right? Um, because these chassis are so small. Um, and it's really important for use cases where power or space limitations are important, sustainability concerns as well. So if you're trying to limit the amount of energy use or energy consumption, um, these are great cards for that. They're also just very cost effective. So it gives a, a sense of flexibility as well as to these cards being deployed for a broad spectrum of applications for modern business needs um, and all sorts of customers who, who may be looking for a more simplistic, um, you know, low power, cost effective, but high performance workstation. Also, Stacy, it's kind of bring up. So we're talking a lot about features and performance and form factors and such. So what if you know someone is listening to this episode and they're currently using you know the the T one thousand or T four hundred and they're thinking about making that upgrade path to possibly the RTX A four hundred or A one thousand. I guess, what would be some performance and feature gains from the previous generation uh, jumping to the new RTX variants? Both GPUs offer significant performance improvements over their uh, Turing architecture-based uh, solutions. 
um, you know, with RTX technology that provides enhanced AI and ray tracing capabilities, a first for those those segments. So opens up new opportunities and you know new workloads and workflows that professionals can can do. Um, they also benefit from higher memory bandwidth. Um, and as well as faster data transfer speeds with uh, PCIe Gen 4 support. So that's just going to help with like overall application performance and workflow efficiency, um, reducing, you know, bottlenecks, um, being able to use multiple applications simultaneously and, you know, not break your, your workflow in that sense. Um, the, the A400 um, has, is, is a pr pretty significant upgrade as well over, like CPU based systems, um, it it offers I think up to like four times higher performance over CPU systems for like graphics applications. So that's pretty significant. Um, that's going to make a big big impact in overall like workflow efficiency, project timelines, you know things like that. Um, from the RTX A one thousand, um, it does really well in you know basic three D rendering, you know that entry level AI, light AI workloads. Um, 3D CAD, you know, that pro product and architectural design, and even 4K video editing um, with like eight gigabytes of memory. So it's a great way to kind of get into more demanding tasks and workloads over the uh, 400 series. And it offers like three times faster Gen AI processing. So for tools like Stable Diffusion, it'll be, you know, three times faster in creating that image um, through, through text prompt. Um, and it's also like three times faster in creating graphics and rendering compared to the T1008 gig uh, GPU. So whether you're upgrading from like the T400 or the T1000, there will be significant improvements by moving up to the Ampere GPU technology. Um, you know, you have enhanced CUDA cores, then you also get benefit from uh, RT cores and tensor cores. So dedicated RTX uh, hardware to you know, have more realistic visuals and to take advantage of any sort of AI acceleration and enhanced applications um, in design or productivity applications. So I know that we've also talked about the A400 and A1000 kind of together in this sense, but can you talk about the main key differences of maybe why one person would get the A1000 over the A400 in different cases? You do have to consider like the specific workload requirements, you know, such as the memory needs, the compute power, and like then kind of choose between whether an A400 or an A1000 is, is right for you. Um, like for example, the A400 is has four gigabytes of memory and the A1000 has eight gigabytes of memory. So um, really depends on what applications you're using, the size of your data sets and your workloads, um, how many monitors you're trying to, to drive at the same time. Um, the A400 is really good as a high density like display solution. Um, you can fit a lot of cards into a single workstation and you can drive you know, up to four uh, monitors. So very cost effective to have that high density um, solution. And then when it comes to the A1000, if you're running more applications or if you're doing a little heavier graphics or rendering work, then an A1000 may, may be the better option for you. But I think it's really important to understand, you know, what the customer is doing, like what their workflow actually entails, and then deciding from there, like how much processing, local processing power you really need. All right, Stacey, again, so we, we do appreciate you being on another episode. And as we kind of get, you know, ready to close, close this one up, wrap things up, I guess the last question I have is, I guess as a whole, you know, the both the, the RTX A400 and RTX A1000 and just as you mentioned a little bit earlier too, just, you know, you have this whole product family of the Ada generation, you know, how do you see GPUs like evolving over the next few years? It might be a hard question because I just, everything's moving at such a fast pace, you know, just with machine learning and inferencing and just Everyone wants thing. Everyone, everyone wants everything. You know, faster and quicker. So, like, how how do you see the GPUs again just evolving in in the coming years? Yeah. So you know, everyone, like every professional, whether a content creator, researcher, engineer, you know, what have you, is going to require a powerful AI accelerated workstation 
to tackle their industry's, you know, toughest challenges. So whether it's from like having needing AI capabilities for content creation or like video processing um, or assisting, you know, everyday business productivity workflows, um, it's really important to have that powerful local AI acceleration and just sufficient processing power in your system. So the latest RTX lineup presents that you know, opportunity for professionals to tap into that power of AI locally from their workstations. And as you know, applications become more enhanced with AI features, there's going to be that growing demand for you know, more computing power and performance. So it's really a great opportunity for professionals who are looking to upgrade to the latest technology to make sure that they can take advantage of the advances in AI, you know, real-time rendering, um, GPU acceleration as well. So that's going to help drive, um, I think, more demand in these professional GPU solutions so that professionals can just continue to do their work more effectively and take advantage of cutting edge technology to really elevate their work and kind of innovate, have breakthroughs and just um, transform their workloads. Perfect, sounds great. Well, thank you so much, Stacy, for joining us on our PMY Pro podcast. And to everyone out there, make sure you follow us on all social media accounts, as well as listen to us on your favorite podcast platforms. Until then, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.